Hey, Cypher here. 2017 was a weird year for historical films. There were some really good ones this year, but also some pretty bad ones. I haven't seen them all, of course, but I think I've watched enough to make my list. So here's the best and worst 10 films of 2017. Throughout this list, I'll be bouncing from the best to the worst to get through it. There were a bunch of fiction films that were really good this year. My favorite is Hostiles, but it makes one minor mistake that just kind of bugs me. Fiction has a lot of leeway to make up the story, so I don't really count it as a true history film. They're fun, but it takes a lot more skill to do an actual based on a true story, hence why these are at the bottom of the list. So quickly, let's talk about each one in a few sentences. First is Mudbound, an interesting flick about the trouble that came with the double V after World War II. It is also about the murky depths of race relations in Mississippi at the time. I already covered it, so on to the next. Loving Vincent is also one I've already covered on this channel. It is basically a film noir about a guy investigating Vincent Van Gogh's apparent suicide. Through that lens, it engages with the current scholarship on the subject. Plus, the whole thing is painted rather than filmed. So it is definitely the most beautiful movie I saw from 2017. Next is Novitiate. This interesting film is about a girl who grows up to become a nun right before Vatican II happened. This was a massive shakeup in the Catholic world, and nuns were the most impacted. Through this film, we really grow to understand the devotion of these people, and why they would go through such extremes. I'll make a review about it eventually. I don't think I need to say much more on Hostiles, but go watch the review if you want to know more about my qualms. Just one little date in text messes up the whole movie. The Promise is the last fiction film I want to talk about. It is a good film about the Armenian Genocide, using a standard love triangle plot to drive the different viewpoints. But there's one major flaw. It slips by so quickly that when I started to put together a review, I didn't catch it until I was already editing it together. It shows some of the genocide out of sequence, and that's a significant plot point. So it only scrapes its way onto this list. This movie is about the crazy world behind the scenes of the creation of Wonder Woman comics. William Moulton Marston, the creator of Wonder Woman, had a polyamorous relationship with his wife and mistress. They even lived in a house together. The kinky stuff they got up to clearly inspired much of the bondage elements that was in the original comic. This sounds like golden material for a based on a true story, right? But the director decided to ignore all of that. She was so ignorant, she actually boasted, I really just wanted to have my own interpretation of the story. So she made up a false lesbian story as part of this. No evidence can be found for the lesbian elements. It was so bad that a hashtag on Twitter ran called Lasso the Truth. Marston's granddaughter now has to deal with the misconceptions from this rubbish. She said, if she, the director, wanted to explore her own interpretation, she should not have used real people's lives to sell her story. Her source has not been named. It could have been somebody standing in line at a grocery store for all we know, and room for interpretation is what Robinson had already decided that she had. I couldn't have said that better myself. Also, the origin of the creation of Wonder Woman in the film is completely false. In fact, Marston's entire involvement with DC Comics was pretty poorly depicted, and that's the most important part. Why even bother making a film like this if you can't tell a good story? Detroit is one of those films that has been unfairly maligned. It's about the 1967 Detroit riot and the lurid details surrounding the Tangiers Hotel. Police misconduct was rampant, and the incident was perhaps the worst thing that happened during the long hot summer, as it's called. Understandably, the film is dealing with some contradictory evidence, so it is troubled in that respect. I, for one, think it is well handled. Some academics have tried to poke holes in the film by calling it racist, but this criticism is extraordinarily unwarranted. Luckily, the director and writer duo have avoided addressing such criticism and making a mess of things. <laughs> the 
The Lost City of Z is about Percy Fawcett, an explorer in the early 20th century. He made a bunch of trips into South America looking for a lost city, but ended up disappearing. This film compresses time to try showing that, but ultimately falls on its face by representing Fawcett with typical Hollywood foolishness. They depict him as some forward-thinking white savior, when he was in no way that. When confronted with this problem, the director instead blew up into a written tirade, revealing himself to be unable to cope with his own inadequacies. It is a ridiculous film, and the director made it significantly worse with his off-screen actions. Dunkirk does something no history film has really done before. It makes the battle itself the main character. Some people have qualms with that, but not me. Historians do this all the time in their own work. Historians of the American West, for instance, really like to use the land itself as a character. Environmental historians do the same. It's unconventional, sure, but that's what makes the film so brilliant. The whole time-warping mechanic of the story is really interesting. I really like this film, but it also resorts to fictionalization to do that. Hence why this one isn't top of the list. Some of the characters could have been made into real people, and that would have been even better. But the main character, as in the battle itself, fits the story well. Marshall is basically about the titular Thorogood Marshall. He was an NAACP lawyer before becoming the first black Supreme Court justice. This film is about one specific case in his long and storied career. I don't know why they chose this one, but Marshall was barred from speaking during the case. So the local attorney hired by the NAACP, Sam Friedman, had to take point on the case. Now the movie could have been about how Marshall had to learn a hard lesson about running around like a hotshot big city lawyer and barging into these local practices without adequate roots to represent these people. You know, having a character arc. <laughs> but I did learn something. I need an army of lawyers just like you, Sam. Just a little bit of training and be just as capable as me. Well, almost as capable. But no, the movie just dumps on Friedman and makes Marshall out to be the only competent and honest person who has nothing to learn. Please, try to make yourself useful. Oh, not a bad picture. Of me, anyway. I need someone who will do as I say. What makes you think I will do as you say? You have no choice. You don't know what you're doing. I'm not your goddamn puppet. You just focus on this case, try your best not to screw it up, and leave the big picture to me. Worst of all, Friedman and Marshall disputed the idea that Marshall was the sole designer of Friedman's arguments, decades before the movie came out. They even throw in a fight scene where Friedman gets beat up, and Marshall is so competent he's able to fight off his assailants. All the while, none of that happened. They literally made up an entire fight, just to dump more on Friedman. So the movie can't tell a good story on its terms or on based on a true story terms. The 1517 of Paris is a magnificent work. I've got a mini review coming out soon, so I won't go too far into it. Basically, they recreated the whole thing with the actual people portraying themselves. Rarely do we see this kind of fidelity, and normally, it's only one person like Audie Murphy's To Hell and Back, which I've been told enough about. This had six people portraying themselves. I had difficulty deciding whether to make this film the best or the next, but ultimately I chose the other one because this film is dealing with recent enough history that people can basically reconstruct the events from their collective memory, making it significantly easier to create. My original review of The Death of Stalin became quite controversial. It was even rated by 4chan, but through such tumult, I stand by what I said. This film had comedy gold and fell flat. Instead, it makes up a bunch of purges and a massacre to basically play into defunct propaganda. I don't care if it was supposed to be funny, and neither should you. Those parts weren't even funny. In fact, most of the humor is fairly dry and sparse. 
funny or not, there is no excuse for saying people died when they did not. That is one of the worst things a film can do. It's not the worst, but it's well up there. You don't need to demonize the Soviets. They were pretty effective at doing that for themselves. The Legend of Ben Hall is a perfect case for how to effectively deal with history in film. Ben Hall was an Australian bushranger, and this film could easily have played into its title. After all, legend could be an excuse for falsification. Outlaw stories are ripe with overglorification and vilification. The entire social banditry myth plagues even historians. Heck, the term was coined by a historian. No such thing happens in this film, though. It instead focuses the story significantly down, to be able to tell the story they were capable of telling. It also refrains from overt moralizing. Nuance and ambiguity, my two favorite things to see in a film. They could have easily played into the myth, and that was avoided. It is accurate and just a plain fun story. That's why The Legend of Ben Hall is the best historical film of 2017. <laughs> I don't know what went wrong with American Made, but it is bad. I haven't done a review of it yet, but here is a brief explanation. The film committed the worst sin a storyteller can do in the history profession. They made a conspiracy theory. That anything was to link us with him, you put it in the burn bag, and then what do you do with it? Burn it. You burn it. The director called it a fun lie in some random interview, but that doesn't remove the obligation to communicate that to the audience. It says the standard based on a true story without any further explanation. If the director had been honest enough to put a fun lie instead of based on a true story, we wouldn't be here now, would we? The movie is about a drug smuggler who in reality almost single-handedly pushed the crack cocaine epidemic of the late 1970s and 80s by flying cocaine below the radar and dumping it into marshes. It could have been a fun movie with just that, but no. They had to bring in the favorite boogeyman of all conspiracy theorists, the CIA. Ooh. The entire movie centers on the CIA and blatantly lies as much as possible to push the narrative that the CIA was fostering the crack epidemic. The director's father was one of the lead investigators of the Iran-Contra affair, so he has a bias to push this whole farce. Almost none of the film is backed up in honesty or evidence. The fact is, there is no evidence for Barry Seal to have worked for the CIA. With that one facet taken away, the whole story falls apart. But conspiracists love to make up their own stories by refusing evidence. That's kind of their whole modus operandi. And that's what American Made is a conspiracy theory. If they had repeated somewhere, maybe in the worthless narration the director seemed to need to shove in, that this is a lie, or just show contradictory bits, or anything to relay to the audience that this is false, I could forgive the conspiracism. But it didn't, and that is why this is the worst history movie of 2017. And just think, Two people died during filming, so the film has blood on its hands in order to construct a conspiracy theory. Okay, so that's the list. I obviously haven't seen everything. Here's a list of films that I haven't seen. Can't hit them all. The research alone would be more time than I have to give. Plus, I've got to get to 2018 films eventually. Also, here is the list of the films I have seen in ranked order. You'll notice there are a few bad ones I couldn't talk about here. 2017 didn't have any films that were accurate but boring, at least that I watched. So I guess that's an improvement. Let's just hope that 2018 learns from the mistakes and triumphs of both 2017 and 2016. And nuns took it the hardest. That sounds wrong. I gotta change that. <laughs> Ben Hall was an Australian bur- 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 bur